So yeah, everyone is going electric and Jeep will be launching its first fully electric SUV in 2023. According to a press release by the brand, Jeep will offer electrification options on each of their nameplates in the next few years as it strives to become the leader in eco-friendly premium technology. Yeah, couldn't have said it better by myself, but in the future, all Jeeps will sound like this, like absolutely nothing. My name is Omar and this is the Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. Is it just me or does 4xe sound a little weird? I've personally been calling this the 4xe, which I think sounds a bit cooler. And I get it, the whole 4x4 and 4xe thing, it's a cool play on words, but I just think it sounds a little bit strange. Either way, this is the second 4xe from Jeep. The first was the Wrangler 4xe, which I've already tested. And right off the bat, this is a much better experience. The Wrangler 4xe wasn't terrible, but it just felt a little rough. And that could very well be because the Wrangler itself is a tough off-roader. However, the Grand Cherokee 4xe feels more refined. It's smoother, it's more comfortable, not to mention the new Grand Cherokee itself is more luxurious than ever. By the way, while this video is about the 4xe part of things, this is also about the new Grand Cherokee. Jeep has been making quite a push to become more luxurious, especially with the addition of the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer. And some of the luxury elements from those two models have made their way into the Grand Cherokee. So is the new Grand Cherokee something you should consider if you're in the market for a luxury SUV? And if so, should you consider the plug-in hybrid electrified 4xe? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of everything that's going on over here, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's go and do this. All right, so every time a brand like Jeep starts going green or starts introducing electric powertrains into their lineups, loyalists and enthusiasts get pretty upset and hey, I totally understand. But just take it easy and let me break down what you're working with here on the Grand Cherokee 4xe. First up, you have a two liter inline four cylinder turbo engine making 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Then you have a 44 horsepower electric motor along with a 134 horsepower motor that replaces the eight speed automatics torque converter. Now working all together, this gives the Grand Cherokee 4xe 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So that is more horsepower and torque than the outgoing 5.7 liter V8. Not to mention, that's the same 470 pound-feet of torque as the outgoing Grand Cherokee SRT. Of course, keep in mind that's only for as long as the lithium-ion battery has enough juice in it. Speaking of the battery, on a full charge, it'll give the Grand Cherokee 4xe a total of 26 miles of range. Comparatively, the 4xe Wrangler gets 21 miles, so this is a little bit better. And if you're wondering, it'll take you about 2-3 to three hours to charge that battery from a 240 volt source. But you can also charge the battery while you're just driving along. If you put the Grand Cherokee 4xe into the e-save mode, that will save your battery power for later use. And once you're in e-save mode, you can select battery charge, and this thing will actually use the engine to charge the battery. You'll also have the help of braking regen to help you charge the battery as you're driving, but you can also pop this into max regen mode by clicking this button right here to help generate more charge to your battery. Now the other two modes here are hybrid and electric. The hybrid mode is the default mode for the Grand Cherokee 4xe, and that's where the engine and the electric motors work together. Pop it into electric mode, and this will run only on electric power until your battery runs out of charge, or if you decide, hey, I gotta go a little bit faster, I'm gonna get aggressive, then that'll kill your battery. All right, moving on, let's get into the Jeep Grand Cherokee part of things, starting with this updated interior. Now, the new three-row Grand Cherokee L and the Wagoneer were the first to debut this updated Jeep interior. Keep in mind, the 4xe is only available for the two-row Grand Cherokee for now, but again, Jeep has promised electrification for each model in their lineup, so I'm sure the Grand Cherokee L and the Wagoneer will eventually get it sometime soon. But yeah, the interior is really nice. Jeep has done a really good job on updating the quality of their interiors. This area right here on the center console has your dial shifter. It also has a switch to circle through your drive modes and another switch to adjust your air suspension. The Trailhawk that I'm driving here is the second trim level in the 4xe lineup starting at $64,695. Now throughout this cabin, you'll see a bunch of Trailhawk specific elements, but since this is a 4xe, all of them are highlighted in blue instead of red. All 4xe Grand Cherokees get leather seats as standard. My Trailhawk test model here has a luxury tech package, which gives you a mix of Napa leather seats along with a suede center. All trims of the 4xe except the Limited get heated and cooled front seats. The Limited only gets heated seats. You also have a heated steering wheel and all 4xe's get heated rear seats as standard. The higher trims will even give you ventilated rear seats as well. 
You have dual zone climate control in the 4xe ES standard. The higher trims will give you tri-zone climate control with a separate zone for the rear passengers. All of the 4xe's come with a sunroof as standard, so that's pretty awesome. But if you want a dual panoramic sunroof, that's an extra $1,835. All right, so let's check out the legroom in the second row. Once you get in, you're working with 41.3 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position. As you can see, I have a good amount of room. Not bad at all. It's actually pretty comfortable back here. You can sit here for a long drive or a long period of time. And the rear seats also recline back and forth a little bit so you can get more comfortable. As a part of the luxury tech package, you also get manual side window peasant blockers. Now the two screens here on the back, these are a part of a $1,995 rear seat entertainment package. And that package gives you two touchscreen displays with an HDMI input so you can hook up your PS5 or your Xbox. And you also have Amazon Fire TV built right in here with all the streaming apps that you'll need. That said, the Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe also comes with a bunch of other screens as standard. First up, you have this 10.1 inch touchscreen display right here in the middle for your Uconnect 5 infotainment system. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, a TomTom -Tom navigation will be optional. But yeah, the system overall is very nice. It's not packed with any high crazy graphics, so it will work quickly. You have a bunch of different options here on the app section for all your various settings and all of your other various apps. You obviously have your off-road pages over here since this is a Trailhawk and you have a variety of information for all your off-road needs. Now you also have a climate screen here, but relax. The cool thing is that you can use this screen to adjust the climate, but you also have the option of using real physical controls right down here if you hate digging through the infotainment system. The 4xe also comes standard with the front passenger screen. Now this screen only becomes active if someone is sitting in the passenger seat. Now, is it a gimmick? Yes. Is it useful? Probably, but not that much, but it's cool that it's there. The other screen you have in here is your digital gauge cluster display. Now, the one thing that I love about this screen is that you can adjust it and customize it in a million different ways. So it displays all the relevant information that you need and want. You have a ton of info here. Now, if you add the advanced ProTech group package for $2,235, this gauge cluster display will also give you a night vision camera. That's super, super cool. You know, because I live in an area with a lot of deers and I can now spot them at nighttime. That package will also give you a range of other driver assist tech, like an active driving assist system, where this will actually keep itself in the lanes as you use your adaptive cruise control system, which by the way, the adaptive cruise control is standard. And you can get a bunch of other driver assist tech on your Grand Cherokee 4xe. A rear view camera is standard, obviously. A 360 degree camera is optional, as is a heads up display. Now the coolest safety feature as a part of the ProTech package is that it gives you an off-road camera system where you can go in and clean the front of the camera if it gets dirty while you're off-roading. Once you hit the clean button, it'll spray water on the front camera. And if you have the night vision camera, it'll also clean that lens as well. You also get a rear camera washer, but that will only spray water every time you clean the rear windshield. You don't have a dedicated cleaning button for that. Now, when it comes to the looks of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the new one, I think it looks awesome. I think it's a great update from the outgoing one. It's a little bit more grown up looking, a little bit more elegant. The Trailhawk model that I'm testing here obviously looks a little bit more rugged since it's more off-road focused, but everything is blued out instead of red like on the regular gasoline powered Trailhawk. All the hooks are blued out. The hooks on the front look really cool in this blue color. You also have a rear hook that's also blued out. And then you have a graphic on the hood that says Trailhawk in blue, obviously, since this is a 4xe. Of course, you also have a bunch of 4xe badging so you can let everybody out there know that you're being fuel efficient. The charge port right here, also has an E badge in blue because, you know, that's the color for going green. But yeah, overall, I like the updated looks to the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. I think it's a good balance of looking a little bit luxurious while still looking a little bit rugged since this is an off-road brand. Let's check out the cargo capacity really quick. You can pop the trunk or the tailgate just by using this button located right there. And once you get it open, you're working with 37.7 cubic feet behind the second row. And if you fold the second row down, you get a total of 70.8 cubic feet. So that's pretty good. Now to close the tailgate, you just hold this button down right over here and quickly step out of the way. Well, not too quickly because it does take a while for the tailgate to come down. So you don't have to like run. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe drives, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'd love to show all of you. You've got four cup holders, two in the front right there, and then you also have two in the back right there in the center armrest. Here are the keys, pretty nice set of keys. You've got unlock, lock, remote start, pop up in the trunk, panic, and on the back you have a Jeep logo. Pretty nice. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. 
solid. Charging game wise, you have a wireless charger right here, which is optional or included depending on the trim. You also have two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, and you have an HDMI port, which you can use to hook up a gaming system and play it on the passenger screen. You've also got a USB-C and A port right here in the center armrest. Rear passengers are also pretty well loaded with two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, and a household outlet right there. All right, let's start it up and do an indicator and horn sound test. That's the startup animation right there. Let's start off with the indicator first. Once the beeping stops, come on. That's the indicator sound, pretty straightforward. And now for the horn sound. That's solid. All right, so let's take a drive in this thing in electric mode and see how this thing behaves. Now getting to cruising speeds in electric mode is much slower than when you have this in the hybrid mode where the electric motor and the engine are working together. And even in electric mode, if you push this hard, the engine will come on to assist because it feels like you want more power. But once you get up to cruising speeds, it'll go back in EV mode. And it's a cool preview of what you can expect from Jeep in the future. It's actually really nice and quiet. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said how this makes more horsepower than the outgoing 5.7 liter V8 and how it makes more torque than the outgoing Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. And again, while that's true, that only remains true as long as the electric motor is running in conjunction with the engine. So you have to choose whether or not if you want to be efficient and have electric range or have power because when running this on just the four cylinder engine, I'm just going to pop this into e-save mode that will turn the battery part and electric part off and just run on the four cylinder engine. It does struggle a bit. By the way, these buttons are crazy hard to see and reach when you're sitting in the driver's seat. I wish they were somewhere else. But yeah, when you're running on the four cylinder engine, it's not bad, but you can see and feel that it struggles a bit. So you really do have to find the balance of what you want from it and you have a range of choices. But keep in mind, it's not like you're always going to be out of battery for that electric motor because this thing, again, does charge itself as you're driving along. For example, I went for an 18 mile drive where I had this in the e-save mode, meaning the four cylinder engine is the only thing that's working. And then I had it in battery charge with max regen turned on. And during that 18 mile trip, I was able to add six miles of range back to the battery. So that's pretty good. So yeah, it all works pretty well, not to mention one of the most impressive things about the 4xe is that you don't feel a big jolt as it switches between the different modes. There's no shake or huge mechanical noise, it just does all that it needs to do in the background. So yeah, this thing is a pretty comfortable daily driver, and that's the thing with the new Jeep Grand Cherokee altogether. This is a huge improvement over the Aquang model. It's more refined, more luxurious, and it rides better. Now, I've seen a lot of other videos on the new Jeep Grand Cherokee where people say this is equivalent to the BMW X5, the Mercedes GLE, or even the Volvo XC90. And it's not, at least not in my opinion. It's really, really, really good, but it's not on that level. And that could be due to the fact that I'm driving the Trailhawk and not the top of the line Summit or Summit Reserve that gives you that full Jeep Grand Cherokee luxurious experience. But even then, I wouldn't go as far as to say this is a direct replacement for a top tier luxury brand SUV. It's a great substitution if you want something that's not as expensive or has better off-road capability. But you're not going to get the same driving experience that you get from driving a BMW X5. That said, I would definitely recommend to go and test drive one if you're interested in one because it is a really good SUV. It has everything that you need and then some. Now, if I was gonna buy a new Jeep Grand Cherokee, would I buy the 4xe or 4xe like I like to call it? Well, if I was deciding between the 4xe or the V6, I would definitely go for the 4xe because that V6 just isn't as powerful or exciting in this day and age. Now, would I get it over the V8? Probably not. And that's only because I'm one of those people that thinks that the Jeep Grand Cherokee has to have a V8 and more capability. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Not to mention I'm one of those people that thinks that EVs just aren't ready for off-roading adventures. Imagine running out of battery when you're in the middle of nowhere. What are you gonna do? Jeep is setting up charging stations, solar power charging stations through like major off-roading parks and stuff, but probably just on the outside. Once you're deep in the park and you run out of battery, that's it, game over. In that sense, the 4xe might be a good option, but a fully electric Jeep in the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere, what are you gonna do?